of the common occurred difficulty in data processing is the data imbalance issue. It is typically referred to a classification problem where the number of observations per class is not equally distributed. Often, you will have a large amount of data observations for one class, which we also call it as the majority class, and much fewer observations for one or more other classes, which also refer to as the minority classes. Falling to the biased and imbalanced dataset may lead to a performance looks great but actually useless model. In this lecture, you will learn how to process imbalanced dataset and be capable to handle this issue in computer vision problems. So here is an example about the Amazon Review dataset, which is a large collection of commodity rating from the Amazon customers. As we can see from the plot, the number of five stars reviews almost equals to the total of the other four types of star reviews combined together. So if we use this dataset directly to train a machine learning model, the model prediction will definitely be biased towards the dominant class and tends to predict a label of the dominant class with rating 5. Well, the other applications, such as fraud detections and medical diagnosis, also suffers from the similar problems of the imbalanced dataset. So how do we tackle this class imbalanced issue? Here are four ideas. So the first two ideas are downsampling and upsampling, where we can either reduce the size of the dominant classes or we can upsample the size of the minority class. Besides pure increase or decrease the true sample data, we can also imitate and create new data that are similar but not identical to the original input dataset. This is mostly what use techniques, and we call it image augmentation in computer vision domain, which will introduce more details in the next slide. Last but not the least, we can also play with the objective function or the loss function of our ML models. The intuition here is to give more voting rights or more weights to the minority classes and the less voting rights or less weights to the majority classes. And now, let's take a look of the image argumentation techniques in details. So the idea of image augmentation is to make a series of random changes to generate more similar to the original training examples, but not the exactly same ones. So compare with pure, compare with pure, pure copy and upsampling the minority class. Compare with pure copy and upsampling the minority class, image augmentation improves the model's capabilities of generalization. So here are some common methods for image augmentation, such as resizing the original image to different scales and aspect ratios, or cropping out or flipping the image. Besides, we can also change the color of the image or the hue or we can change the brightness of the image, etc. If you are interested to more details in code, feel free to check more details in the detail book. So here are some samples for the image argumentation. For the original image on our left hand side, we can crop the image or flip the image horizontally or vertically. Besides, we can change the hue, which is a color, and also the brightness 
of the given image. And now we can get a green or a blue cat, even though it's rarely seen. So after dealing with the data imbalance issue, there are one more step before the training, which is the data splitting to train, validation, and test datasets. This data splitting process also applies to all the other balanced datasets as well. So what are we going to do is first shuffle the original dataset, and then we split the train, we split the original dataset to training set and test set. The test set is used to check the model's performance on unseen data during the training. Remember, never unveil the test set until very end after the model training. And then for the training set, we usually split it again to train and validation. And the function of the validation data set is to use for tuning the model, change the hyperparameters, or use for other models tuning to help us to generalize our model by compare through different model architectures and different sets of parameter, hyperparameters. And now, with the training and validation set, we can start our training of our model. So tuning the hyperparameters and evaluating the recursively until we find the best set of model. And in the end, we can use the best model to estimate the model performance. So that's the whole data processing for training a machine learning model. If you would like to learn more details, check the detail book through this link.